because you're training us for the position that you want us to have. Just as David did not become governor in one day, you had to train him so that he can be able to maintain his position when he becomes governor. Also for us, you are training us. You've been training us because you have this perfect life you prepared for us. You have this higher calling you have for us where you cannot just give in to us unless you've already trained us. But after you've trained us, after you've tested us, I believe you'll be able to come out as pure gold that can be used for your mate works, that we can be able to push the gospel. May you give everyone, may you meet them at their level of needs. May their lives be filled with these great works of the gospel. And may people be changed and may people be able to receive and believe you through their lives. Lord, I know you love us. You love our church. You've been doing great things for us. You've been there for us. And you're ready to work for us. You're ready to work each for each and every brother and sister in our church. Because you chose them. They are your special vessels. Through them, you want the whole world to see how you work and strongly you're working. May you really be glorified in their lives. May you be manifested. May you work powerfully for them. May they be able to wake up thanking you and going to sleep thanking you. May they be really the symbol of God's works in the lives of everyone around them. Lord, we thank you for this morning. May you make this deliberate a part of our everyday lives so that whenever we wake up, we want to listen to your word. We want to start the day with your word. And we are able to um, think and contemplate about your word, upon your word, in everything we can be able to acknowledge and cherish your word. But may you be with us in your presence. May you, your presence be filled in this Zoom room. May we be able to listen to your word with a humble heart and understand with the wisdom. May you be glorified. We thank you for this morning. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah. Morning. Uh, we are somewhere a bit late. Actually, I think there is some unavoidable circumstances. So, we will receive them tomorrow. Yeah, so uh, let's share the word before we can start our day. Can we see John chapter 1? John chapter 1. John chapter 1, I'll read verse 14. John chapter 1, I'll read verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 15, John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me, and of his fullness we have received, and grace for grace. Yeah, morning once again. Uh, uh, also, this morning I was thinking about this John chapter 1. Uh, John chapter 1 is the, actually, to me, it is the most beautiful introduction introduction to a book in the Bible. So when you read John chapter 1, you feel that you have understood the whole of the gospel of John. But uh, uh, when I read this scripture, always this verse 14 is touching my heart. And whenever I remember it, always there is a special way how God is working, you know, uh, in my heart through this uh, verse 14. So nowadays we are meditating about 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 7, you know, verse 9, from verse 1, actually, the story of the lepers. And along the way, uh, Pastor began to guide our hearts through the book of Ruth. And as we also meditate on the book of Ruth, uh, for sure, we can see how God is arranging the hearts of the people that can take the steps like the four lepers. So everything is interconnected. So uh, we could see that uh, how these four lepers are able to take this step, you know, it's being explained, you know, through this book of Ruth, you know, one by one, 
one by one. God is teaching our heart and arranging our heart. So uh, this time there are many programs of the church and uh, though there are some usual program, but this usual program, uh, church is guiding us you know, to do them in an unusual way, big way. For instance, uh, last year we opened the area fellowship and through the area fellowship, we are doing the area Bible studies, the area service, and also area Bible seminars seasonally, seasonally, area Bible seminars seasonally. And then this time, uh, we believe that in this year, God is going to turn all these area Bible, sem Bible fellowships into churches. And so by the end of this year, we are going to have several uh, metropolitan churches within the Kampala. And also there are many other, other, other activities, also many other programs that you know, God is building. For instance, also our Cecil Music School is going to change. And uh, I will believe also we shall have the, you know, uh, the technical, a mini technical vocational school. So all the programs that we have, they are being upgraded. They're being, they're being upgraded into bigger, 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 you know, uh, programs. And not only that, but also brothers and sisters, I believe that uh, even in your heart, there is a heart to, to see you know, something different from, the, from what you are seeing last year. And that is 2022. And now, nowadays, there is one prayer in my heart. Uh, when I see brothers and sisters, they talk about my boss, my boss. I really feel bad in my heart. Uh, why they should talk my boss, my boss, my boss. I want someone to refer to them, our brothers and sisters, as their bosses instead. For instance, uh, brothers and sisters all may have their own businesses instead of working for a certain boss somewhere, such that you know all their time, you know, they're thinking about the gospel and also work of the gospel and uh, you know fellowshipping. And God wants to give us that kind of life. God wants to give us that kind of life. So I believe also in this year, our brethren are developing this dream. By the end of this year, I'm, not, I'm going to graduate from working under a boss and then being a boss. For sure, for the gospel, anything God can do for us. But you know, uh, the heart by which God, is go God wants to work for us in this year is like the heart of these four lepers. You know, these four lepers. And uh, which kind of heart was working in the heart of these four lepers? The heart which was working in these four lepers is the heart to, to take the step you know, according to the word, to take the step according to what I have heard. So this sounds, you know, usual. It sounds, it sounds familiar. Uh, it sounds, you know, obvious. But actually, it's not really obvious because if I can ask myself how many times uh, I listen to the word and I take the step by this word. I cannot clearly find. So these four lepers, they listen to the sound of uh, the servant of God, Elisha. And regardless of their condition, you know, they took the step by that sound and they moved. It is the most difficult, but also the most beautiful step ever taken, the steps of the four lepers. And so what is that meaning? It is meaning that if anything God wants us to do the, to practice to do this year is to practice to you know to live by the word of God, to practice to take the step by the word. You know this word tomorrow by this time, tomorrow by this time, is not just you know tomorrow by this time. This word can mean one tomorrow by this time can mean one second after after this after one second after this or one minute after this or one hour or one day after this. It means that God wants all our life to be shaped by tomorrow by this time. Tomorrow by this time is to challenge my limitation, to challenge my mind, to challenge you know, my weakness, because we have a lot of weaknesses. And because of these weaknesses, we tend to you know, fall, to fall to, to these weaknesses. But other than falling to this weakness, when these weaknesses arise, if we believe in our heart, if the word tomorrow by this time arises, we can believe that we are going to accomplish. I'm going to accomplish. 
So these four lepers, you know, as they move, as you know, their condition, they're always tired, falling down, even some parts of their bodies are falling down. But this word continuously, tomorrow by this time, tomorrow by this time, this word was continuously you know, driving their heart. And as long as this word is driving their heart, the sound of their footstep kept on sounding like great host of the army, you know, towards the Assyrian. That's how God worked. So I could see my weak, uh, my small step of faith by the word of God. It is very magnified. God magnifies it. So sometimes we think that I should make a big step or I should make it big. Then maybe God will work. Maybe it will sound. But in the heart of God, he just wants something very small, just like a mustard seed. Then that one will sound like a big host of army coming to attack. So when I think of this promise this year, uh, really, I believe God wants to work very powerfully. So in my heart, God gave me this dream. Before December, I want to have the 50 Bible studies. I want to have the 50 Bible studies. The one by one, I can see God is opening for me those Bible studies. So I believe that uh, our brothers and sisters, uh, God has put in us this dream according to the word. The worst brother and sister this year is the one who will not dream according to this, you know, as 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse 9. God has given us the opportunity to dream as big as we want. You know, this word in John chapter 1, verse 14, uh, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. So the word became flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. In other words, you know, this Bible is saying, uh, this word, God is telling us like this, in order for uh, us to see the work of God, in order for us to see the work of God, the word has to become, you know, flesh. The word has to become flesh. So the people are able to see Jesus physically. The people are able to see Jesus physically. Then how are they able to see Jesus physically? Because they received, you know, they received you know, Jesus. They received Jesus in their hearts and believed that this is Jesus. So now, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. There are two stages of the word. One is which I am receiving in my heart or listening. But the second is this word becoming, you know, flesh. In other words, this word becoming you know, my life. This word becoming my life. Then for this word to dwell with me or to dwell among us, it must become flesh. In other words, it must become our life. And it says, and of his fullness we have received grace for grace. We have received grace for grace. So we can't see uh, how the word is able to enrich and also work for us when the word has become flesh. So there is the procedure how the word become flesh. There is the procedure how the word become flesh in our life. Uh, let's read one scripture here. Still in the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them he gave them the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name. So as many as received him, to them he gave them the right to become the children of God. So in order for this word to become flesh, first we have to receive him, receive the word inside of our heart. Then the right to become children of God means the right to live with the life of God. The right to live as God. Living with the life of God, living as God means seeing what God is seeing. And also living with what God is living with. So that's why you know, receiving the word in our heart is very important. And they became the children of God. So who are the children of God? Well, let's see one scripture. Luke chapter. Just a moment. Luke chapter 21. Uh, 
Luke chapter 1. Uh, just a moment. Uh, Luke, actually Luke chapter 20, so let me find the verse. Luke chapter 20, let me find the verse. Wow, why is the verse skipping from my mind? Luke chapter 20. Oh my God, the verse is skipping. Luke chapter 20. I can't find this verse. So, but uh, if you remember, it says like this. It says, oh, okay, Luke chapter 20 and verse 38, I found it. Luke 20 verse 38, it says, For he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him. As we see here, Luke verse 38 of Luke, uh, God is describing whose God he is. And he says he's the God of the living, not God of the dead. So the living are the ones who are the, you know, mobile, dynamic, can move. These are the living who can move. And so who are these living? These living are those who believed, received the word of God, who have received him or received the son. These are the living. And also this living, they're referring to the righteous, those who do not have sin in their heart. And then who are the dead? According to Ephesians chapter 2, the dead are them who are with the sin in their heart. But also in the spiritual life, the dead are those who don't receive the word of God in their heart. Those who only live with their own, you know, you know thought, would only live with their own experience, who live with their own thought and wisdom. These are the dead spiritually. Meaning, even though I'm born again, but if I always live with my thought, I judge everything with my own opinion, according to my experience in the eyes of God, I am dead. And also this dead refers to sinners. So these are the living, those who receive the word. They are the ones who are able to live with the life of the word, with the life of God. And so God has given us this, you know, Second Kings chapter nine chapter chap, chapter seven so through this uh through this god wants to communicate his life to us and god is giving us the, the life to live even i believe today uh continuously this word can be you know flesh in our uh in our lives this word can be flesh <clears throat> it says to them that received him he gave them the power to be children. So we know, we know the meaning of power. Now, power means ability to live or more different than others or better than others. To live, you know, more normal than the usual normal. That is the meaning of the power. And so those who receive the son who received the word of God in their hearts, they're able to live more normal than others. I don't want to call it abnormal. And also they're able to live differently from others. This is the life that God has designed for us in this you know, uh, year, in this season. And God has designed it through you know, the story of how the lepers were able to change the whole of the city of Samaria and also change their own lives as well. So I believe that uh, for sure we are the people who are going to uh, who are going to 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 take the step and the word of God become the flesh. Unless the word of God become flesh, we cannot see the power of God. 
We cannot see the work of God. Yeah. So the receiving is one thing, and then taking the step is another. Taking the step is another. Yes, receiving means I've become child of God, but I can be this child of God who is dormant, who, who is not seeing the work of the Father. But also I can be this child of God who is continuously witnessing the work of the Father. So I believe that we are the people who are the children of God who witness the works of God in our lives and also are able to be used by God you know, to save others like the lepers could save the uh, city of Samaria. So really, I'm so much thankful. When I was thinking of this word this morning, uh, God could give my heart a lot of energy and also I'm able to move. So as you know, the Bible says the days are evil. The days are evil. And then those who do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. So these are the times that we should know God. These are the times that we should know the word of God. Then we can do the exploits. Otherwise, you know, we will be beaten down by the days. So I believe also uh, we shall uh, raise the word of God in our hearts. And also we shall move by this word regardless of the situation. Thank you so much. I'll finish here. And uh, 